With me, the Columbia University professor and director of the Centre for Sustainable Development, author of the book The Price of Civilization. Jeffrey, I read your views on this, and you're, you certainly have some transparent views in terms of how NATO's expansion has, has taken place, and, and in, in your view. Um, but now we are where we are, and it's a question of getting out of this before any more lives are lost or what long term economic damage done. Well, Jay Powell has it exactly right. Uh, the world is uh, falling into uh, fragmented groups, and there will be extraordinarily high costs from this. The sanctions that the United States and Europe uh, have put on have done a tremendous damage to Europe and the United States and to much of the rest of the world. And we're feeling the brunt of now a strong stagflation, which was the main topic uh, facing the central bank leaders that were in Sintra, Portugal. Uh, this is a, likely a, a hard landing in uh, much of the world uh, coming up in, in the next months. I, I think that our foreign policy strategy, both towards China and towards Russia, has been provocative and divisive for a number of years. Uh, this didn't just start now. Uh, there was already the right. U.S. trade wars uh, on China and then the technology wars, the financial sanctions and all the rest. We've divided the world and now we're paying a, a strong, uh, heavy cost for that. Right. But, but let, let, let's put blame where blame lies, surely. Uh, whatever NATO's expansion may have been about or in the 1990s, etc. It doesn't justify, and I see your views, you know, that what Putin did in Ukraine, and there had to be a strong response to that, surely. Of, of course, uh, but there should have been negotiation in 2021 when Putin said uh, NATO should not expand to Ukraine and Georgia. I would have been the first one to say absolutely correct. Uh, why do something so provocative, something akin to the Crimean War back in 1853? We shouldn't be having a Black Sea confrontation. So we should have been prudent. Putin said last year, negotiate over the non-enlargement of NATO. Biden said, absolutely not. That's off the table. We are going to expand. We're committed uh, to having NATO not only in Ukraine, but all the way across to the eastern edge of the Black Sea in Georgia. This is a huge expansion of NATO. NATO was a defensive alliance of Western Europe against the Soviet right. Union, okay. a defensive alliance against a country that doesn't exist. And yet we said it will continue to expand all the way to the eastern edge of the Black Sea. And Russia kept saying, no, for 30 years, I was there at the beginning when this discussion started. Uh, Russia was saying, don't do that. Gorbachev was saying, don't do that. Hans Dietrich Genscher, the German foreign but, but minister Jeffrey. in 1990, said, don't worry, we won't move one inch. Now, this isn't to say that uh, this, this isn't to say that that is what started the war. The war was started by Putin. But the United States has been provocative, provocative also towards China. And my point Richard, is we're paying a heavy economic cost. That cost is likely to rise. Uh, NATO today is 12.2 percent of the world but Jeffrey, population. Jeffrey, let me, jump, much of let the, me jump in here. Sure, Jeffrey. Sure. Surely <laughs> you can't deny now, however right that your argument might or might not be, and I'm sure there'll be people who will take issue with it, but you couldn't deny Sweden and Finland now the right to have to have the protection of the NATO umbrella, having seen what Putin can do. Bearing in mind, he told us straight to his, our faces, I have no intention of invading Ukraine, up to the very moment that the tanks went well, over the border. What is absolutely remarkable is that at the end of March, negotiations were advancing for a neutral Ukraine and for an end of the war. And then Ukraine walked away from the negotiating table at the end of March. And the reason is that the UK and the US pressed them, you can win on the battlefield. You don't have to negotiate non-enlargement right. of NATO. This was a big mistake. My point is simply that we need this war to end with Russia leaving Ukraine 
and NATO saying we're not going to fill in the void. Right. Na Ukraine is going to be neutral. And this is how we could also save the world economy as well as saving Ukraine. It's very straightforward. Russia needs to leave, but the United States doesn't need to fill in afterwards. That's the basic point. We need a yeah. buffer. Right. We'll talk more about it. Jeffrey, I'm grateful. Wonderful. To have you today. Thank you, sir, always.